Economics has its fair share of obscure terminology, but there are some key concepts that are worth understanding. Within ecological economics, these include the ideas of stock flow and fund service resources, and in neoclassical economics, they include the concepts of excludability and rivalness. Neoclassical economics uses the term factors of production to describe the inputs to the production process that are necessary to produce the outputs. Typically these are labor, capital, and maybe land if natural resources are considered. Ecological economics uses the terms stock flow and fund service to distinguish between two fundamentally different types of resources. It's probably easiest to just give you an example. When you make a pizza, you need a cook, a kitchen with an oven, and some raw ingredients. If you think about it though, you'll see that the cook and the kitchen are different in some fundamental ways from the raw ingredients. The cook, the kitchen, and the oven are what we call fund service resources. They're required to make the pizza, but they're not used up in the process. Or, if they are, something has gone terribly wrong. The dough, the cheese, and the anchovies are different. They do find their way into the pizza, and they're what we call stock flow resources. So how do we define these two concepts more generally? Stock flow resources are materially transformed into what they produce, and they can be used at almost any rate desired. Productivity for these resources is measured by the number of physical units of the product that they are turned into, and they can be stockpiled, and they are used up, not worn out. Besides pizza ingredients, some examples might include fossil fuels, barrels of beer, non-renewable resources like copper, or a bicycle for sale in a store. Fund service resources, on the other hand, are not materially transformed into what they produce. Instead, they are the things that do the transforming. They can only be used at a given rate, and their productivity is measured as output per unit of time. They cannot be stockpiled, and they are worn out, not used up in the process of production. Just think of the cook in the kitchen after a long day of pizza making. Besides human labor, other examples include land and sunlight. They also include a bicycle that you ride every day. So how can a bicycle be both a stock flow and fund service resource? Well, the classification depends on what the resource is used for. If the bicycle is just sold as a commodity, and you can stockpile it in your basement, then in this sense it's a stock flow resource. However, if you use it to ride to work or to the university, then it's a fund service resort. Two other important concepts that are helpful for analyzing uh, resource use are excludability and rivalness. Excludability is a legal concept. An excludable resource is one where ownership allows one person to use the resource while denying others the privilege. Rivalness, on the other hand, is an inherent characteristic of certain resources. A rival resource is one where consumption of the resource by one person reduces the amount available for everyone else. So let's classify some resources as excludable or non-excludable, rival or non-rival. And in doing so, I want you to ask yourself, can I prevent you from using it? And if I'm using it, are you still able to use it? Let's start with a slice of pizza. This is an excludable and rival resource. If I own the pizza, I can stop you from eating it. And if I eat it, you're not getting any. The ozone layer, however, is non-excludable and non-rival. Even if I passed a law saying only I could use it, you'd still benefit from the protection it provides, and similarly my use of the UV protection from the ozone layer does not lessen it in any way for you. Ocean fisheries are a bit trickier. If we're in international waters, it may not be possible to create a law that stops people from fishing, or if we do create one, it may be unenforceable. So we would say it's non-excludable. However, there are a limited number of fish in the sea. And if I go and catch them all, then there won't be any left for you. So it's a rival resource. Lastly, a beach. 
Private beaches are excludable by definition, while public beaches are non-excludable, and rivalness really depends on the number of people. If there are only a few people on the beach, then it's non-rival. However, if the beach is packed, then it becomes much more difficult to find a place to put your towel, and this is what we call a congestible resource, and it becomes rival in this case. There are a few links among the concepts I've introduced that are worth noting. The first is that all stock flow resources are rival. Think of fossil fuels. These are rival, and the stock is diminishing. All non-rival resources are fund service resources. Think of the ozone layer. It's a non-rival fund service resource. However, the relationship doesn't go both ways. Some fund service resources are rival. If I'm riding my bicycle, you're going to struggle to ride it at the same time as me. And lastly, if a resource is non-excludable and non-rival, it's what we call a public good. The market does not do a great job of producing or allocating public goods. This is why non-excludable and non-rival goods like national defense or most ecosystem services cannot be provided by markets. The state is generally needed to step in.